Hello, my name is Sarah Sharada and I'm the Senior EPR Data Quality Training Facilitator for Education at Bradford Teaching Hospitals. In this video, I will be showing you how to request a patient transfer, how to reserve a bed for a patient, cancelling a transfer and cancelling a bed reservation, how to undo a transfer, completing a consultant transfer, transferring ward theatre as well as transferring theatre back to the ward, how to complete an ad hoc transport request, targeting a patient to a ward, how to complete a bed swap and transferring a patient to an empty bed. All SOPs for this process can be found via the EPR SOPs desktop icon once you've double clicked onto the icon and navigated through to the appropriate trust, you can either locate the appropriate SOP by going into the applicable section or you can do a document quick search located at the top of the screen. All titles for the SOPs covered within this video will be provided in the description box below as well as timestamps if you wish to skip to this section. In order to request a patient transfer, you must first have the patient selected from the bed board and clicking on to the transfer icon and transfer patient. This will load up with a portering window which you can enter how many porters are required, mode of transport and if there is any patient attributes which the porter needs to be aware of. Pressing OK to this window, this will put the patient up onto the transfer list in the top of capacity management. From here, you can click into the destination box, clicking on to the three dot icon, and you can either search for the ward that this patient needs to go to, or alternatively, you can use the options at the bottom to expand until you have located the ward in question. Once you have selected the ward that you wish to send this patient to, press OK and this will confirm the ward assignment which is targeting the patient to ward 22. This does not reserve a bed. The next stage would be to await the appropriate operational team who will then reserve a bed for this patient. In order to reserve a bed for the patient, you must first come to the ward that you wish to transfer this patient to. Once you have identified the bed that you wish to reserve for this patient, you can then click onto the patient's name. When you have them selected, ensure that you keep the patient selected and drag the patient into the available bed. This will pop up with a window in which you can dispatch transport, which will send a task to the porter to move this patient into the bed reserved. At this stage, again, you can select how many porters are required, mode of transport, whether the patient will return to the current location. In this case, the patient is currently located on ward 21. They will not be returning to this ward, so I will not be selecting this option. And for the transfer reason, I'm going to say that we are moving the patient for staffing needs. As soon as press OK to this, it loads up with a portering window once again, which will send the information to the porter as to where the patient is being collected from and where the patient needs to be taken to. Any details entered previously in terms of the porters required and any patient attributes would have carried through into this window. I'm gonna press OK to this and that task has been sent off to the porter. If I needed to cancel the bed reservation, this can be done by coming to the transfer list, clicking on the drop down to the left of the patient's name, coming to the transfer icon, and you can either unreserve the destination, which releases the reservation from the bed. And if we needed to cancel the transfer completely, we can come back to this drop down and cancel a transfer. Once the porter has completed this transfer, he will complete this on the iPod device and this will automatically put the patient into their new bed in capacity management. 
Alternatively, this can be completed from the transfer list by coming back to the drop down, hovering over transfer and complete transfer. And as you can see, the patient is now in their new bed and their previous bed will be marked as dirty. If a transfer had been completed accidentally and this needed to be undone, you must first confirm with the ward that this patient has been moved to incapacity management and confirm with them that this was a mistake. And in order to correct this with incapacity management, you can select the bed that this patient is now in, come to the PM conversation, and undo transfer. It will open up the PM conversation for this undo transfer, ensuring any information which is mandatory has been completed. In this case, there isn't any, so I'm gonna go ahead and press OK to this. And it will take the patient out of the bed that they were placed into accidentally. And if I return to the original ward, I can see the patient is now back in the bed they originally were from. In order to complete a consultant transfer, again, make sure that the patient has been selected on the bed board. Coming to the PM conversation and transfer consultant. Once the PM conversation screen has loaded, it does confirm that this will only transfer the consultant. Any fields that are yellow are the mandatory fields. Once you have searched the lead clinician, it will automatically populate the requested main speciality and the treatment function. Ensure there's no further mandatory fields to complete. In this case, it is asking for the transfer date and time. And in order to confirm this consultant has been updated, you can double click onto the bed and it will confirm the intending clinician in this window. When needing to transfer the patient from the ward to the theatre, select the patient from the bed board and click onto the transfer icon and transfer patient. This will open a portering window and to any applicable portering information such as how many parties are required, mode of transport and any patient attributes. Pressing OK to this window, this will put the patient onto the transfer list. From here, we would need to reserve the destination that the patient needs to go to. In this case, it would be the theatres. This would be up to the correct operational team who would reserve this. For this example, I'm going to reserve this patient into theatres trolley 2. To reserve the destination, I will click onto the patient's name and drag them into the trolley in question, which will load up with a screen requesting if I wanted to dispatch transport, which will request a porter. How many porters are required in the mode of transport? Will the patient return to the current location? As this patient is going to theatres, they will be returning to the original location. And at this stage, I can send a job to the housekeeping to clean the bed. Transfer reason, I'm going to be saying ward to theatre and press OK. This will come up with another window, which is the portering window, which again will carry through any information previously entered. Um, at this stage, if I've missed anything, I could re-enter this. I'm going to press OK to this window which has sent a job to the porter to complete this job. It has also reserved the destination, which you can see by the lines. Once the porter has completed this job, the patient will be viewable in theatres. When the patient has successfully had their procedure and they needed to return to the location that is currently held, you must first select the patient from the bed board, clicking on to the transfer icon, and you will have the ability to return the patient to a held location. When you click onto the return to held location, it will come up with a portering window, 
which again, you can enter any patient attributes and any further information required. And it will then ask us to dispatch the transport, which will send a job to the porter. The reason for the transfer this time is theatre to the ward. Pressing OK. And I will OK the portering window. As soon as the porter has completed the job, the patient will be removed from the theatres and they will now be back in their held location. If circumstances had changed and the patient was no longer returning to the held location, at this stage, the bed will still be in a held status. Whilst the bed is in held status, this is not available for any other purpose, though we will need to release the hold on this bed so that it is available for use. In order to release a held location, you can select the patient from the bed board, coming to the transfer icon and release hold on location. This means the patient can now be moved to an alternative ward by placing the transfer patient request which will put the patient onto the transfer list and we could begin the transfer to an alternative location. In this window, I need to enter any portering details required. As soon as I have entered the applicable information, the patient will be on the transfer list. Instead of sending the patient back to the ward that she came from, I'm going to send her to ward 19 instead, which we do have an available bed. I'm going to click onto the patient's name and drag her into the bed I wish to reserve. And I'm going to dispatch transport to send a task to the porter. She will not be returning to theatre, so I'm not going to hold this location. Transfer reason, I'm going to say the condition worsened and press OK. It's confirming the details to the porter as to where the patient needs to be collected from and where the patient is going to, any details that has been missed at this stage, which is important for the party to know of, I can then enter at this stage and press OK. As we can see, the destination has been reserved. We can see this from the transfer list. All we would need to do is await for the transfer to be completed by the porter, at which stage the patient will be viewable in their new ward. If we needed to request a porter for ad hoc jobs, this could be the patient has an outpatient appointment or they need to have a radiology test and we needed to be able to request a porter to take this patient to that location. This can be done by selecting the patient from the bed board and clicking on the portering action. Requesting ad hoc portering which will come up with a window which has a yellow mandatory field. It's confirming where the patient currently is located, but we need to enter where the patient is going to. Clicking on to the three dot icon. Once again, you can either search for the location in question or use the arrows to expand until you have found the applicable location. For this scenario, I will say that the patient has an outpatient appointment in Outpatient West that they need parted to take them to whilst they're an inpatient and press OK. At this stage, you can enter any applicable information the porter needs to be aware of, including patient attributes and press OK. This has sent a job to the porter. For ad hoc transport, this is for scenarios where the patient needs to go to a location that does not have an inpatient location built in capacity management, such as outpatients, where the patient will still be viewable in the bed in question. They will not leave this bed during this ad hoc transport. If the patient was on the transfer list and we needed to target the patient to a ward, this can be done by clicking on the patient's name from the transfer list and drag them into the top of the ward. This will give a confirmation window stating that the patient will be targeted to this ward. As soon as we press OK, this will update in the transfer list, confirming the target. 
and this will also be viewable in the ward when we hover over the summary it will confirm the name of the patient which is currently targeted to the ward. This stage the applicable operational team would then need to reserve the patient a bed in this location. In order to complete a bed swap this will be swapping two patients within the same ward. First you will need to select one of the patients that you wish to swap and click on to the swap bed locations icon. This will give a message stating the bed swap is on. From here you can confirm and locate which patient you wish to swap the patient with. So I am swapping single side room bed 1 with bed 2 bed 12. So long as my bed swap is still on, I'm going to click on to one of the beds or the patients. Ensuring I keep my mouse selected, I'm going to drag the patient into their new location and release my mouse. It will give a confirmation of the two names of the patients that I am swapping. This stage you can confirm that you are swapping the correct patients. If you had accidentally done the wrong thing, you can still cancel at this stage, but I will be pressing OK. Now, in my case, it has given me a gender breach override reason. This is due to bay 2 being a multi-gender bay, whereas the single side room is currently a female. I am going to say that this is an approved mixed sex area and press OK. It has come up twice because I need to override this for both patients. I'm going to override this again and press OK. And you will now see that the patients have now swapped into their new locations. Alternatively, if we needed to move the patient from their current bed into an empty available bed on the same ward, this would be known as an intra-ward transfer. This can be done by clicking on the patient you wish to move and dragging it into the new available bed on the same ward. Once I've released my mouse, it will give me the option of dispatching transport if I required a porter to complete this job. As it is an intra war transfer, I'm not going to request a porter to move the patient. For the transfer reason, I'm going to say condition worsen, and this happens to be closer to the nursing station, as well as being a smaller room and more comfortable for the patient. I'm going to press OK to this which you can see it has now reserved the destination. Once we have moved the patient into the new location, you can click onto the transfer icon and complete transfer. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions relating to any of the processes covered within this video, you can contact any member of the team on the email addresses provided. Alternatively, you can email epr.dqtraining at bthft.nhs.uk. This email account is monitored by the entire EPR training team and it is monitored daily.